Welcome to EDU TV with 4.5 lakh plus viewers and over 1500 educational repositories across the world. The founder is Mr. Pranav Guha Thakarada and co-founder is Ms. Tanya Sefi. Hi, this is Pranav Guha Thakuta from EDU TV. Today, we have got two young girls with us and they will be discussing and telling the benefits and advantages of liberal arts. And our host is Talima Mehta, a 12th grader from Grand Columbus International School, Faridabad. She will take the show further. Over to you, Dalima. Hello and welcome to EduTV. I am Dalima Mehta, a 12th grader from Grand Columbus International School, Faridabad. Today, we have a special guest with us, Mrs. Anju Deoskar, the Director of Admissions and Outreach at Flame University in Pune. Flame University is well-renowned for its liberal arts education, and Mrs. Deoskar is here to share her insights on careers in liberal arts. With over 5 lakh viewers from all over the world, we are excited to have her join us today. Welcome, Mrs. Deoskar. Founder is Mr. Pranav Guha Thakur, and the co-founder is Mrs. Tanya Sethi. So, Mrs. Deoskar, liberal arts education is often associated with a wide range of career options. So, could you please tell us the advantages of pursuing career in liberal arts and how it prepares the students for the professional world? Absolutely. Thank you so much. And Dalima uh, and uh, Pranav. Pranav is a very good friend. And, uh, 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 you know, we've been associated for a long time. And I totally congratulate you for such a huge viewership, Pranav. You're definitely doing a great, great job. And uh, this is something that I think the youth requires to be aware about what's happening. And uh, it's a great initiative. And Dalima, a very, very good morning to you. And thank you so much for the lovely introduction. So uh, when we're talking about liberal education, uh, unfortunately, uh, people still think that liberal arts or liberal education has something to do with only humanities and social sciences. Very less know that it also integrates the other disciplines such as sciences or computers, data, data science, uh, even finance uh, on the other hand. So um, uh, when you look at the world at large, do you think it exists in silos? No. I mean, somebody who is, for example, I'll just go to example, somebody who's just an artist or maybe a historian or a writer. Do you think all his life experience are going to be, uh, uh, you know, tuned to a path uh, where the, that person will never encounter a, a, a place where, you know, you must have some basic uh, understanding of the sciences or, you know, things like that. So the world does not exist in silo. Unfortunately, the modern day education does exist in silos. Not, I'm not talking about again the Gurukul and the Takshashila, uh, you know, uh, the universities that we had. Those were uh, liberal arts universities. So people, when they came, they studied sciences, they studied social sciences, they studied humanities, they studied everything. They studied about society, and society isn't anything where science is. I mean, science is not missing out of the society. It's very much prevailing their technology today. So uh, the world doesn't exist in silo. Unfortunately, the conventional universities or conventional education system, and especially at the higher education, does exist. And here again, I give you an example. You go, maybe uh, you're a commerce student in your 11th and 12th, and I'm 100% sure everybody's been advised to take jobs in like, you know, CA and banking and, you know, stock and stuff like that, right? And then you go to a university, you join a BBA or a BCom or something from day one, you study only the subjects that that discipline talks about, right? Here at in liberal arts, in liberal education and uh, at Flame, and we were the pioneers to set up the university of a kind uh, in the country, the first one, actually. So here, here what we do is, what what happens is a student who's coming from even a science background or humanities background or commerce background when you come to the university 
they are exposed to all of the other disciplines. I'm a humanities, but I have to take up two courses in natural or physical science. I'm a humanities student. I have to pay, uh, pick up courses from social sciences. Uh, I have to learn a couple of languages. I have to uh, understand about design and aesthetics. And then when I explore all of this, I can still continue to do my humanities or whatever my uh, initial preference is. But now I understand the world better. So for example, if somebody is um, uh, you know, a computer science uh, and data science student at Flame University, that student has done at least eight courses in various other subjects be it you know languages be it psychology sociology philosophy archaeology so many subjects the student has studied mm -hmm. now just come to think of this computer science coder when he actually becomes a professional he will understand and foresee a problem that is worth solving vis-a-vis -vis a computer science graduate who just knows computer science who has to be given a problem and then that person finds a solution to it mm -hmm. and this is the major difference so liberal arts university flame university and there are others in the uh, country now uh, uh, fortunately so these university when you go there you understand the society you understand yourself you know, I think any university has done its job if it has allowed plenty opportunities uh, opportunities to the student in the course of the three or four year degree to figure out what are the student's preferences. That means, and I don't have to follow what the world is saying, I can make my own decisions and I understand and I won't make my uh, decisions randomly. I will evaluate, I will synthesize information, I can research, I can uh, challenge a question, and then I make a decision. So it is very um, uh, narrowly put, if you're just talking about liberal arts connected with just a career, it's actually connected with life. And it's a very philosophical thing that I'm saying, but it's absolutely true. And if you Google and say, you know, the top most successful 10 people in the world, they've all studied from liberal education universities. So, so you have to understand we're living in a world. We're not living in a shell. So um, uh, all the viewers here, please do not block yourself with prejudgments or sometimes uh, uh, this is also a call to all the parents if, if uh, uh, anytime they happen to listen to me. Please do not um, give so much of super emphasis on the undergraduate where you want to specialize so early. Undergraduation is about exploring. Undergraduation is about finding your passion and doing the foundation and then jump into a post-graduation. And today is the world where, um, you know, specializations are required. So yes, liberal education plays a huge role in setting a very, very solid foundation where we give you, give our students their voice. Uh, we give them knowledge to understand the society and we give them uh, training to be able to predict and have some wisdom to, uh, uh, you know, uh, understand what might be the future problems. Because you guys are the future, not us. Thank you, Mrs. Deoskar. Okay, so uh, many students and parents are also concerned about the practicality and employability of liberal arts degrees. So what would you say to those who question the value of liberal arts in terms of job prospects and long-term success? Very, very good question and a very important one. And I'm glad we are addressing this. Uh, when it comes to careers, nobody goes to a university just to have a degree and put it in your profile. That used to happen, by the way. So in my generation, we all went to our degree courses. And after we finished our degrees, then we thought, Acha, abhi kya karna hai? because we were clueless then. Because if you're a BA or a BCom or BSc, there were no jobs. I mean, you had to still go and figure out your interest and then change a couple of jobs before we really found out what our calling was. Please ask 10 adults, you know, in age of 45, 55 range, and uh, uh, you'll get the validation from there. Now, what is happening today is because the the economies, the, the, the industry, the work industry is so dynamic. I want, like I gave you an example, for example, a student who's studying uh, a psychology and has interest in science also. There's a beautiful career out there for a student in psychology. And one might think that, okay, you're doing psychology, you'll just become a clinical psychologist or you'll become a, 
uh, a consultant where you like do various the regular psycho psychology jobs no that's not right psychology is very much embedded with technology today and i don't know how many of you might have heard the term uh, human factor engineering these are not uh, engineers from the engineering schools these are psychologists who understand the human behavior and work along with the uh, engineers who are probably creating robots everything is going to be automated uh, robots are taking over you've heard about chatbot uh, uh, i mean uh, G gpt basically and all of these coming in so it's just going to change so fast and so dynamic if you do not and please hear me out loud if you do not possess these qualities of understanding the society and having a domain of your own discipline, I mean, liberal arts doesn't mean that you're doing everything randomly. I've done all of these courses and then I've become an expert in finance. So it means as a finance uh, individual, I understand human psychology because I did take, I, I can make better, I can have better customers. I can convince my customers better because I understand their uh, uh, thought process. Or if I've taken courses in computers, uh, which you, I mean, which you have to in the first year, you also know uh, how to use that technology while you're still in your financial industry. Uh, and alongside, you also study a minor in these liberal education. So maybe if I'm doing finance major and I've minored in probably uh, film and television, do you know I have two ready-made careers right in my hand? So please, it is very practical, practical with a quality, not just practical where you have to uh, slog yourself from grade eight onward to just get into an IIT. Or like, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm not saying anything against them. They're great schools and they produce great uh, uh, stalwarts in those institutions. But do you know at what cost there lacks of people who have probably not been even closer to their dreams and just a handful uh, students doing it. Please, there's a place for everyone today. And I strongly recommend, uh, uh, you know, the liberal education uh, uh, to the youngsters because number one, you do not wrote, learn and write here. So everything is practical. You're literally um, uh, aware of what that subject really means because you'll be, you'll be uh, immersed in a lot of research and presentations. Uh, so for parents who have this question about practicality, let me tell you, and we do these industry uh, surveys, uh, industry prefers a student who has a wider range of knowledge to somebody who has just a narrow uh, understanding because the world is changing so fast. Those industries also don't know what's in store for them. So they want people who are, uh, uh, you know, critical thinkers and you get to do this when you, you can critically think only you're aware about certain things. If you're not aware about X part of the society, how are you even going to question that part in the society? Your understanding. So this is what the industry want. Industry doesn't want people who are uh, uh, you know, the storage of knowledge, which the conventional universities do to a student. Industry wants the processors of knowledge. Knowledge is very easy. I never studied physics or chemistry. I'm never a great fan. You give me any question and I challenge you. And one hour you give me to prepare, I'll be able to talk for five minutes about that. So knowledge is that easy. You don't even need to go to a university for knowledge. What you need to go to a university is that does it prepare you to question that knowledge? Does it prepare you to build upon that knowledge? And that happens when you can ask right questions, when you can write well, when you can present yourself well, when you understand ethics, when you understand environment, that is the time when you can do that. So yes, it is very, very practical. There are tons of jobs uh, available. We have a students uh, uh, going in the top companies uh, uh, every year on year. And uh, not only companies, also going to top universities around the world uh, uh, for their post-graduation. So yes, it is very practical, very, very feasible. And uh, if you've not been able to give a school education to your child where they were not thought to critically think, then this is the time that at least in the university, you challenge yourself and experience what, we are, what the real world is. It's very, very dynamic and you have to be prepared uh, to an extent if you go. In fact, that's a question for me to the parents and, uh, you know, all those uh, questions that come on practicality and all if you have studied, you know, I have uh, a daughter who studied her engineering in a university in India. By the time she finished her engineering, whatever she learned was absolutely redundant. It was redundant. So which means any which ways, whatever you study, you have to keep on learning. 
keep on learning. Now, let me tell you, universities, people went to university just once after the school. That time is over. Everybody in their 30s, in their 40s will have to keep revisiting the universities to learn new things that are going to be happening. And that's the world we are entering. So, um, uh, yes, it is practical. It's accepted. It's, in fact, endorsed by the industries now. Thank you, Mrs. Teoska, for sharing your valuable insights on careers in liberal arts. Your expertise and guidance have provided us with a deeper understanding of the advantages and opportunities that await the students in this field. We truly appreciate your time and participation. We hope that our viewers have found this interview enlightening. Thank you once again and best wishes for all your future endeavors at Flame University. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pranav. And thank you so much to you for hosting me on this show. Please. Welcome to EDU TV with 4.5 lakh plus viewers and over 1,500 educational repositories across the world. The founder is Mr. Pranav Guha Thakarada and co-founder is Ms. Tanya Sethi.